problem number eight. We want to solve each equation. We're giving approximate radian solutions between zero and pi. So when I look at tangent x equals five halves, what I want to do is I want to find first all the solutions within one period of the tangent function, which would be between zero and pi. Let's see, tangent is positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second quadrant. So I know I'm going to be drawing a first quadrant picture here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's the angle I'm looking for. And obviously it is between 0 and pi. I don't have any way to find it by hand. But that angle is in the zone for the inverse tangent function. Inverse tangent knows about angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So all I have to do is go to the calculator and I've got my answer. I am in radian mode, tangent inverse 5 halves, 1.1903. There's our solution, 1.1903 radians. Letter B. Now I can do the same thing on this one, although this one's quite a bit trickier. I want all the solutions in the interval 0 to pi. That is the period of the tangent function. It's a negative ratio this time, so I know that I should draw my picture in the second quadrant. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. The 11 would get the negative sign. The x clearly is negative there. So here is the angle that I want. The problem is that's a second quadrant angle. It's bigger than 90 degrees. Inverse tangent has only heard of angles between negative 90 and positive 90. So I'm going to have to find some way to use symmetry and the calculator to get my answer. The key with tangent is to remember the period is pi. So the values repeat themselves every 180 degrees. In other words, if I rotate it around exactly 180 degrees over to this quadrant, I'm going to find the exact same triangle, same labels. It'll be the 3, of course, that's negative this time. This little angle here, that is findable by the inverse tangent function. That is a negative angle in the fourth quadrant, and inverse tangent knows about it. Well, if I can find that angle, let's say it was negative 30 degrees, all I would have to do is rotate around an extra 180 degrees, and that would take me to this spot. So I'll do this in two steps. I will find the green angle. Why don't I call that A? That's going to be tangent inverse of negative 3 elevenths. Tangent inverse negative 3 over 11 gives me negative 0.2663. That is not the answer. To get my answer, as we said, I'm going to have to add 180 degrees onto that. That'll take me to the spot I want. So my x is that a value that we just got plus pi more, plus 180 degrees more. All I need to do is go back to the calculator, take that last answer, and add pi to it. That gets me 2.8753 radians. And that would be the final solution. We used the tangent inverse function to give us the one angle that it knew about. And then we used the symmetry of the picture to find ourselves the answer in the interval we were looking for. If the original interval had been, say, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, then this would have been the answer. But I was looking for 0 to pi, so I had to make that adjustment. Problem number 9. We're given one trig ratio. We're told information about where the angle is located and we want to find another trig ratio. We can do this all by hand using a simple picture. Tangent theta is negative 1 fourth. Theta is in quadrant 4. So I'll draw myself a reference triangle picture in quadrant 4. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. The negative obviously would be here. So negative 1 over 4. Here's the angle in question. Well, maybe that's the angle, or maybe it comes around this way. I'm not exactly sure, 
but I don't care. I'm not being asked for the angle. I'm just being asked for the sine ratio of that angle, which I can find as long as I do a quick Pythagorean theorem here to get the hypotenuse. Looks like I'm going to get 17 equals c squared, so obviously c is just the square root of 17. Hypotenuse is always positive. And so sine theta, the sine ratio of that angle, is opposite negative 1 over hypotenuse. When I rationalize the denominator, of course, this is going to turn into negative root 17 over 17. Letter B, alpha is in quadrant 2, so I'll be drawing my triangle picture there. Cosecant alpha is 4 thirds. Let's see, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that means sine would be 3 fourths, 3 opposite, and 4 hypotenuse. Uh, I'm just looking for the value of tangent alpha. Here's angle alpha, or at least here's a possibility for angle alpha. I just need that missing side there. So I can write a squared plus 3 squared equals 4 squared. That gives me a squared plus 9 equals 16. Subtract the 9, a squared equals 7. Square root, square root. You do have to think about the plus or minus here. I might get a negative. Let's see, which is it? Oh yeah, I'm in the second quadrant, so the x is definitely negative over there, negative root 7. And now that I have that, I can easily write down the value of tangent alpha. It is opposite over adjacent. 3 over negative root 7. Do my rationalizing, and I'm going to end up here with a negative answer, 3 root 7 over 7. Problem number 10, I want to evaluate each composition function by hand here. Part A, find the sine ratio for the angle whose cosine ratio is negative one-fifth. The picture is everything. Where should I draw it? Well, cosine inverse only knows about angles between 0 and pi, in other words, in quadrants 1 or 2. This is a negative ratio, so I must be in quadrant 2. So I'll draw my triangle here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Here is the angle in question. I don't know what that angle is. I don't need to know. I'm just being asked to find the sine ratio for that angle. This is really very similar to problem number 9 when you think about it. I just need to fill in that missing side. I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Negative 1 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. After I square the numbers out, it looks like I'm going to get b squared equals 24. Square root, square root, plus or minus. I will be choosing the plus this time. I can see that that's a positive y value. And this simplifies to 2 root 6. 24 is 4 times 6. I can pull the 4 out as a 2. So my b value here is 2 root 6. And now I can write down the answer. The sine ratio would be the opposite, the 2 root 6, over the hypotenuse, 5. Letter B is similar. We are assuming that x is positive. Let me write a little 1 here so that it looks like a ratio. If x is positive, then I'm drawing a first quadrant picture. The tangent ratio of this angle is opposite over adjacent, so 2x over 1. Here's the angle right here. I don't know what it is, that's okay. I just want to know the cosine ratio of that angle. That requires me to fill in the hypotenuse. I can do that using the Pythagorean identity. Let's fill in our pieces. 1 squared plus 2x squared equals c squared. That's going to give me 1 plus 4x squared equals c squared. I'll square root both sides. I don't need to worry about plus or minus because I'm dealing with the hypotenuse, and so obviously c is equal to that square root, 1 plus 4x squared. There is no way to simplify that. I want the cosine ratio. Well, the cosine ratio would be adjacent 1 over hypotenuse, which is that square root. And we've talked about this before. When you have variables involved, there's not really any great need to rationalize the denominator. And so here would be our final answer.